Hi everyone. Today in this video we are going to discuss about alfujosin. What is the mechanism, side effects and clinical use of alfujosin? What is this drug? Here the suffix josin indicates alfujosin is a alpha 1 blocker. We have few other drugs like prajosin, doxajosin, terajosin. All these are ending with the same suffix josin which indicates they are belonging to the category of alpha 1 blockers. And we have another drug like tamsulosin which is having a similar suffix and this drug is somewhat more selective towards the alpha 1A receptors. So it is a more selective alpha 1A blocker. And here alfajosin is also selective towards the alpha 1A receptors which are located on the bladder as well as the prostate tissue. But apart from these alpha 1A receptors, it can also block the other types of alpha 1 receptors. That's why alfajosin can be used in the treatment of benign prostatic hyperplasia. So today in this video, let us see how this alfajosin is useful in the BPH. What are the side effects and precautions of this drug? First of all, let us see the structure of alfajosin. So this is the structure of alfajosin. As this drug is ending with the suffix josin, it is having the similar structural features compared with the other drugs like prajosin, doxajosin, and terajosin. One of the common structural moieties is the heterocyclic ring system, which is nothing but quinazolin moiety. And this quinazolin is attached with an amine group at the fourth position. So all these alpha blockers are quinazolin for amines. We can also observe a side chain at the second position, which is uh, at the terminal attached with a ring system like this. And this is nothing but the tetrahydrofuran 2 carboxamide moiety. So these are the structural features of alfajosin. So alfajosin is a quinazolin 4 amine derivative. Now let us see how this alfajosin acts. Already we have discussed that this drug acts as a alpha 1 blocker, so it can block the alpha 1 receptors which are located at the bladder base as well as neck and prostate capsule as well as urethra. By blocking of alpha 1 receptors at these target organs, alfajosin can produce a bladder relaxation which may increase the urinary flow. So in the BPH, urinary flow is going to be reduced because of the bladder constriction and prostate enlargement. In such situations, alfajosin can produce a relaxation thereby it can increase the urinary flow. Similarly, this drug also blocks the alpha 1 receptors located at the other organs, particularly vascular smooth muscle. So this results in the hypotension and this hypotension may lead to the syncope that is fainting in the patients. So the therapeutic benefit of the alfajosin is mainly attributed to its action on alpha 1 receptors present at the bladder as well as the prostate tissue. Now let us see how this drug can produce the relaxation of the bladder as well as vascular smooth muscle. At the target organs like the bladder or vascular smooth muscle, alpha 1 receptors are present which are G protein coupled receptors with 7 transmembrane units. And these alpha 1 receptors can be activated by one of the important mediator norepinephrine. Norepinephrine is a sympathetic mediator. When it acts on the alpha 1 receptors, it can produce a contraction. This norepinephrine can bind to these alpha 1 receptors which are G protein coupled receptors coupled with the phospholipase C system. So by activation of these receptors, phospholipase C is going to be stimulated which can clear the phosphatidyl inositol biphosphate into the two important components. This phosphatidyl inositol biphosphate is going to be cleaved into two components. One is the IP3 and second is the DAG, diacylglycerol. This IP3 can act on the internal stones so within the cell, the sarcoplasmic reticulum is going to store the calcium and this calcium can be released through IP3 receptors. Now the IP3, which is released as a secondary messenger, it can act on the IP3 receptors. Therefore, it can activate the internal calcium stores, resulting in the release of the calcium from the sarcoplasmic reticulum. And another mediator is the DAG, diacylglycerol. This diacylglycerol can activate the protein kinase G which are going to stimulate the inward going calcium channels. Now calcium can more enter into the cell such that the intracellular calcium levels are going to be increased. Whenever these intracellular calcium levels are going to be increased, it produces the contraction of the smooth muscle. In this way, norepinephrine can produce the contraction of bladder base, neck, 
prostate capsule, urethra as well as vascular smooth muscle. Now let us see how this alphagocin acts. Alphagocin acts as an antagonist at the alpha 1 receptors. It can bind to the alpha 1 receptors such that it can inhibit the alpha 1 receptor activity and it can prevent the contraction of the smooth muscle. In this way, alphagocin can produce a bladder relaxation as well as vasodilatation. What are the side effects? The important side effects include headache, dizziness, fatigue and particularly these three symptoms are closely associated with the vasodilatory effects that can be produced by alphagocin. Similarly, this drug can also produce fear of the upper respiratory tract infections. This drug is reported to produce a bronchitis, pharyngitis. So these symptoms should be carefully monitored when this alphagocin is used for longer periods. And another important side effect is the postural hypotension. Already we have discussed alphagocin can block the vascular smooth muscle which are equipped with the alpha 1 receptors. So due to this alpha 1 block, it can produce a vasodilatation resulting in the postural hypotension. Other side effects include constipation, dyspepsia and nausea which can be observed on the gastrointestinal system and it can also produce some abdominal pain. On the cardiovascular system, it can produce some chest pain as well as it can increase the angina attack. So that's why this drug should be carefully given in the cardiovascular patients and these cardiovascular complications are more observed in the patients who are having pre-existing cardiovascular disorders. And this drug can also produce the priapism, the long-term erection of the erectile tissue which may produce some pain and because of the vasodilatation, edema is also observed with the alphagocin. What are the precautions? One of the important precautions of alphagocin already we have discussed, this drug is going to block the alpha 1 receptors, therefore it can produce a postural hypotension. So when this drug is given, it can produce few of the symptoms like the dizziness, blurred vision, syncope, the fainting sensation in the patients, weakness and confusion in the patients. So these symptoms should be carefully monitored when this alphagocin is given. And interestingly, these symptoms can be observed even with the first dose of the alphagocin. So that's why these symptoms are called as first dose effects. So patients should be warned about these symptoms, which can be observed even with first few doses. And another important precaution, alphagocin can produce a renal impairment. So it should be carefully given in the renally impaired patients. And it can also produce a hepatic impairment on long-term therapy. And in patients who are having the severe hepatic impairment, then this drug should be strictly contraindicated. How it is given? Alphagocin is given as an extended release tablet for benign prostatic hyperplasia. This drug is given at 10 mg once daily. So that's about this alphagocin. Alphagocin is one of a alpha 1 blocker which is having the quinazolin 4 amine moiety. This drug acts as an antagonist on alpha 1 receptors as well as alpha 1A receptors. That's why this drug is indicated for the treatment of benign prostatic hyperplasia. As this drug produces a bladder relaxation and increases the urinary flow, it can be used in the treatment of BPH. But at the same time, it produces a vasodilatation which may result in the postural hypotension, resulting in the dizziness and syncope in the patients. This drug is available as an extended release tablet which is given at a dose of 10 mg once daily. So that's for today. Hope you have enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel. Share this video with your friends. Post your comments in the comment box. Thank you for watching this video.